Hello everybody, welcome at Abhimanyu IS, which is a leader in the preparation of UPSC and state civil services examinations and has produced more than 2200 selections in a time span of just 23 years since its beginning in 1999. Today's lecture will start before I want to share an important information that uh, Abhimanyu IS we have 2023-24 को टारगेट करते हुए UPSC एंड स्टेट सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन के लिए फ्रेश फ्रेश बैचेस स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं ये वन ईयर का कोर्स होगा जिसमें हम प्रीलिम्स एंड मेंस को टारगेट करेंगे ये ऑफलाइन एंड ऑनलाइन दोनों मोड्स के थ्रू अवेलेबल है एंड एट अभिमन्यु आईएएस वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग 7 डेज फ्री ट्रायल क्लास आल्सो अगर आप इस क्लास को ज्वाइन करना चाहते हो तो आप डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए लिंक के ऊपर क्लिक करके ज्वाइन कर सकते हो अभी हमने अभिमन्यु आईएएस में इश्यूज एंड एनालिसिस के ऊपर एक सीरीज स्टार्ट की है दिस इज एन एक्सट्रीमली वैल्यूएबल सीरीज फॉर द यूपीएससी एंड स्टेट सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशंस इस सीरीज में हम करंट टॉपिक्स का एनालिसिस करते हैं उनकी डिस्कशन करते हैं वो टॉपिक्स व्हिच आर कंसीडर्ड वेरी मच यूजफुल फॉर द यूपीएससी एंड स्टेट सिविल सर्विसेज प्रीलिमिनरी एंड मेन एग्जामिनेशंस मेरा नाम डॉक्टर एच एस सिद्धु है मैं अभिमन्यु आईएएस में इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस एंड इंडियन इकॉनमी टीच करता हूं आई हैव बीन मेंटोरिंग सिविल सर्विसेज एस्पिरेंट्स फॉर मोर देन 15 इयर्स and uh, I have authored some books also for the UPSC and state civil services exam preparation. So, aaj main jo topic discussion ke liye le raha hu, that is related with the international relations which comes under UPSC civil services main examination general studies paper 2. Aur mera aaj ka topic hai India's engagement in Central Asia. To chaliye hum aaj ka topic start karte hain. So, topic hai, first of all, we will know what is Central Asia, which is the Central Asian region. So, Central Asia is a region in Asia, which is bordered by the Caspian Sea on the west and China on the east. So, this is a region which is bordered on the north by Russia and on the south by Iran. Afghanistan and China. So, in this region there comes five countries. So, those countries are Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan and uh, Kyrgyzstan. These are the five countries which are in this region. So, this region is a landlocked region. All of you must be knowing about that. And uh, This region has a very well developed network of uh, roads, railways and oil and gas pipelines which cross from east to west and uh, north to south and uh, connect this the industrial hubs of the world with the consumer markets you can say. Uh, on this map, you can see that this is a rail network hai, jo show kiya hai. This is the uh, silk route trains yellow and this blue is the trans siberian rail network and uh, the red lines are the connecting train routes in this region apart from that there are uh, uh, roads highways etc gas pipelines oil pipelines are also there so and uh, this region remained the epicenter of the first wave of globalization which connected the eastern world with the western world and uh, that is what I mean to say that is the ancient silk route. Okay? So, that uh, played a very important role in the globalization in the ancient uh, world. Okay? So, this ancient silk road uh, which uh, involved the countries that is China, India, Afghanistan, Pakistan and it uh, ran through the Central Asia. Central Asia was the hub in this ancient silk route also. 
now china's one belt one road which is the new silk road which connects the east asia to the europe that also passes through this central asian region this is the you can say land route uh, which is in the obor one belt one road initiative of china this red line and this blue line represents the maritime route we are talking about the uh, this land route which which is represented by the red line and it also passes through this region uh, we can say which is the central asian region uzbekistan kyrgyzstan tajikistan uh, and uh, that uh, uh, this uh, turkmenistan etc so why central asia is important to india pehli baat hai ki central asia is very rich in minerals and uh, hydroelectric resources and uh, india ko mineral supply chahiye because india is a growing country which is developing at a very fast pace right now and uh, if we uh, have a look on the रिसोर्सेस ऑफ दीज कंट्रीज राइट कजाकिस्तान है जो वो वो उसके पास वर्ल्ड का सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट रिजर्व है यूरेनियम का एंड कजाकिस्तान इज द लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ यूरेनियम एज वेल एंड उजबेकिस्तान हैज़ द लार्ज रिजर्व ऑफ गैस यूरेनियम एंड गोल्ड तुर्कमेनिस्तान हैज वर्ल्ड फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट रिजर्व ऑफ नेचुरल गैस एंड ताजिकस्तान is having a huge hydro power potential and kyrgyzstan is rich in gold and the hydro electric power also apart from that this region has become a pivot for intra and intercontinental economic and trade linkage intracontinental linkage means uh, if you want to go from the south asia to russia or so then you have to cross through this central asian region and if you want to go from the eastern asia uh, to the europe via the land route even then you must have to cross through the central asian countries so ye ek tarah ka aadhar hai you can say for economic and trade linkages between the east and the west and uh, next important that why this region is important to india the next point is uh, uh, this region is important to india in the context of uh, energy needs also because india is a energy hungry country seeing the size of the economy of the country and uh, the geographical size and the population size of the country and uh, the country is developing at a faster pace uh, as i have told already so in that context uh, this region is uh, important for the energy needs of india as well and moreover this region provides a very near abroad market for india's industry so indian industry can benefit from this if india would be having good relations very cordial relations with the central asian world okay and uh, moreover if we want to trade with russia or uh, middle east even then the international north south transport corridor is important uh, and this international north south transport corridor which we will discuss in the next part of the lecture today and that also uh, runs through this uh, uh, central asian region and ye uh, jo international north south ट्रांसपोर्ट कॉरिडोर है इसके थ्रू अगर हम ट्रेड करना चाहेंगे यूरोप के साथ या जो मिडल ईस्टर्न कंट्री है फॉर एग्जांपल टर्की एट्सेट्रा तो ये हमें कंपैरेटिवली ये रूट शॉर्टर है इफ वी गो वाया इंडियन ओशन स्टेट ऑफ बेबेल मेंडेब रेड सी स्वेज कैनाल एंड मेडिटेनियन सी सो दिस रूट इज़ कंपेरेटिवली शॉर्टर एंड सेफर एज वेल बिकॉज देयर Uh, near in the red sea region or uh, that uh, gulf of yemen region near strait of 
Bab El Mende particularly, there is a, um, the very high risk of the piracy as well. And uh, apart from that, uh, from the security perspective also Central Asian region is very much important. How? Because it, uh, uh, you can say, acts as a buffer. Uh, buffer in what respect? To contain the fallout of uh, fundamentalism. Fundamentalism in Afghanistan, if we talk particularly about that. Okay, so what is fundamentalism? Fundamentalism means uh, when the people who are having the orthodox religious beliefs and uh, they are very much strict in this respect uh, and they want to force the religious beliefs which are orthodox religious beliefs on the uh, people living in the society. So that is basically we can say the fundamentalism is there. And this is happening in Afghanistan as on today we are seeing. So uh, because Central Asia is there, so, so that means uh, those forces uh, which promote the religious fundamentalism, which advocate the religious fundamentalism, so instead of, uh, uh, you can say, straightening their guns towards India, so Central Asia is one more region where they can, uh, you can say, uh, spend their energy or uh, 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 give their focus as well. And similarly to forestal encirclement by any regional or outside power. Okay, so let's suppose here is India, let's suppose here is India and uh, here is the Central Asian region, we can say. Okay, so this is a land landlocked region. Let's suppose if there would be sea, right? If there would be no Central Asia, and if there would have been the sea in this particular area, so then there was a security risk for India as well. Okay, because India uh, could be, uh, India might be in encircled in that way by the various forces as we are seeing today uh, by the way of this uh, string of pearls policy china is encircling india uh, on the eastern side on the western side and on the southern side as well like in sri lanka hamban tota port similarly china is developing the ports in myanmar in bangladesh and uh, there is a uh, uh, one port, Gawadar port, which China has developed in Pakistan as well. So, so that way, in that context, I am talking here. Okay. So, the next uh, point is that uh, to insulate India from narco-terrorism, a threat emanating from the fallout of Afghanistan to Taliban. Okay. So, because uh, Afghanistan may have political change, aa chuki hai. American forces and unki jo allied forces hain, wo Afghanistan ko chhod kar ja chuki hain. Afghanistan is in the control of Taliban again. And uh, there is one term which is the narco-terrorism which is developing. Narco-terrorism kya hota hai? Ke drug traffickers jab violent means or terrorist uh, means exercise karte hain to influence the government that is known as the narco-terrorism. Okay? So, uh, this is there. So, ye jo narco terrorism ko insulate karta hai. Uh, otherwise, jaise maine aapko pehle bola hai, ke if, if there would have been no Central Asia, if uh, countries, Central Asian countries, if there would have been a sea or let's suppose the ocean. So, then in that case, uh, the guns of uh, these uh, forces in Afghanistan would have been straightened towards India. And now there is another region also where they can straight their guns. Okay, so and uh, India's engagement in Central Asia. This is important. That uh, what is the engagement of of India in Central Asia? India Central Asia ke saath achhe relations banane chahta hai, cordial relations rakhna chahta hai. India Central Asia ke saath apni engagement ko increase karna chahta hai. जिस चीज को हम इंडिया सेंट्रल एशिया वर्चुअल समिट जो अभी जनवरी 2022 में हुई थी जिसका होस्ट इंडिया था उसको देख करके हम 
इसको समझ सकते हैं वो इसकी एविडेंस है जो मैं बात आपको कह रहा हूँ राइट सो इस इंडिया सेंट्रल एशिया वर्चुअल समिट में सभी लीडर्स ने इंडिया एंड सेंट्रल एशिया के रिलेशंस को नेक्स्ट हायर लेवल पे ले जाने की बात की एंड ये भी बात हुई कि इंडिया सेंट्रल एशिया वर्चुअल समिट हर दो साल बाद दैट विल बी कंडक्टेड एंड ये भी बात हुई कि हम डिफरेंट एरियाज़ में जैसे डिफेंस है डेवलपमेंट है एंड ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स है इन सभी एरियाज में इंडिया एंड सेंट्रल एशियन कंट्रीज विल विल इंक्रीज देयर कोऑपरेशन इन द डेज टू कम एंड सिमिलरली इंडिया हैज हिस्टोरिकल एंड सिविलाइजेशनल लिंकेजेस विद सेंट्रल एशिया थ्रू द सिल्क रोड व्हिच वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड फ्रॉम थर्ड सेंचुरी बीसी टू फिफ्टीन सेंचुरी ए डी इन फिफ्टीन सेंचुरी ए डी द यूरोप डिस्कवर्ड द ट्रेड रूट टू इंडिया ओके सो दैट मीन्स एंशियंट सिल्क रोड इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंडिया सिविलाइजेशनल एंड हिस्टोरिकल लिंकेज विद द सेंट्रल एशिया रीजन एंड इट इज थ्रू दिस रूट दैट द बुद्धिज्म स्प्रेड फ्रॉम इंडिया टू सेंट्रल एशिया एंड मोर ओवर इन मेडिवल टाइम्स ऑल्सो वी हैव सीन दैट बाबर केम टू इंडिया एंड ही लेड द फाउंडेशन ऑफ द मुगल एम्पायर इन इंडिया सो बाबर केम फ्रॉम दिस यू कैन से फरगाना वैली दिस इज द फरगाना वैली फ्रॉम वेयर बाबर केम टू इंडिया दिस इज द फरगाना वैली ठीक सो बाबर केम टू इंडिया एंड दिस फरगाना वैली इज इज इन उजबेकस्तान दैट इज इन द सेंट्रल एशिया वी कैन से एंड नेक्स्ट दिस इज द सिल्क रोड यू कैन सी सो द एंशियन सिल्क रोड ओके इन वॉल्ड द कंट्रीज इंडिया विच इज प्रेजेंटली द पाकिस्तान एज वेल इंडिया ऑल्सो अफगानिस्तान ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ दिस ईरान ऑल्सो चाइना ऑल्सो सेंट्रल एशिया ऑल्सो द एंटायर रीजन एंड नेक्स्ट इज यू एस एस आर की डिसइंटीग्रेशन के बाद यू एस एस आर की डिसइंटीग्रेशन नाइन्टीज में होती है नाइनटीन नाइन्टी वन नाइन्टी टू नाइन्टी थ्री दीज आर द रीजन द disintegration of the US and after that uh, India ने अपनी association इस region के साथ बरकरार रखने के लिए maintain रखने के लिए and और देशों के साथ अपनी association को बढ़ाने के लिए uh, right so India uh, came with the extended neighborhood policy okay so extended neighborhood policy uh, which are the extended neighbors of India what are the extended neighbors of India so this region which is in the uh, this western asia this region which is the central asian region and this region which is we can say the uh, you can say eastern asian region so these are the extended neighbors of india and india is very much keen to increase its cooperation with all these countries and uh, the one more thing which is that is the pipelines network so these pipelines transport uh, oil from caspian sea offshore facilities in kazakhstan and gas from turkmenistan and there is one uh, gas pipeline project which you all must have heard that is the tapi it means uh, turkmenistan afghanistan pakistan india gas pipeline okay which uh, uh, starts from this region uh, which is the Gelkenish natural gas field in uh, Turkmenistan, and then it passes through the Afghanistan and Pakistan to reach India at Fazilka, which is in Punjab on the Indo-Pakistan border. So, the reality. What is the reality now? So, if we see the ground situations today, the reality I would mean to say. there are the problems like religious extremism fundamentalism which i have discussed earlier and uh, drug trafficking which pose big challenge to central asian countries and to regional stability also 
सो ये जो प्रॉब्लम्स हैं रिलीजियस एक्सट्रीमिज़म की फंडामेंटलिज्म की ड्रग ट्रैफिकिंग की ये सेंट्रल एशियन कंट्रीज़ के लिए प्रॉब्लम है एंड ये रीजनल स्टेबिलिटी के लिए भी एक थ्रेट है दिस रीजन इज फेसिंग ए न्यूअर थ्रेट फ्राम नार्को टेरोरिज्म एमिनेटिंग फ्राम अफगानिस्तान दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड एंड दिस रीजन इज़ एन एरिना ऑफ ग्रेट गेम बींग प्लेड आउट बिटवीन वेरियस कंट्रीज ड्यू टू द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस सेंट्रल एशियन रीजन बिकॉज द सेंट्रल एशियन रीजन इज स्ट्रेटेजिकली इम्पॉर्टेंट एज वेल एज द रीजन इज हैविंग द इकनॉमिक इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑल्सो एंड दैट इज वाई दिस रीजन इज एन एरिना ऑफ द ग्रेट गेम बिटवीन रशिया चाइना यू एस टर्की ईरान यूरोप इंडिया पाकिस्तान ऑल दीज कंट्रीज आर द स्टेक होल्डर्स इन दिस रीजन एंड दे वॉन्ट टू इनक्रीज देयर इन्फ्लुएंस इन दिस रीजन सींग द स्ट्रेटिकल एंड इकनॉमिक इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस रीजन एंड मोर ओवर द नेक्स्ट रियालिटी इज दैट इंडियाज़ कोनेक्टिविटी टू द सेंट्रल एशियन कंट्रीज इज पुअर दैट इज ए मेजर बॉटल नेक इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द इनक्रीज इन कोऑपरेशन और एसोसिएशन बिटवीन इंडिया एंड द सेंट्रल एशियन कंट्रीज दैन द पुअर कोनेक्टिविटी इज एन इशू इन दैट विच हिंडर्स द यू कैन से इनक्रीज इन द ट्रेड एंड कॉमर्स इनक्रीज इन द कोऑपरेशन बिटवीन दीज कंट्रीज इन वेरियस वेज ओके बिकॉज वी डोंट हैव द डायरेक्ट कोनेक्टिविटी विद दिस रीजन वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज इन बिटवीन इंडिया एंड सेंट्रल एशिया देर इज द पाकिस्तान विच इज द पाकिस्तान अकुपाइड कश्मीर देर इज सम पार्ट ऑफ अफगानिस्तान ऑल्सो एंड देन यू कैन से कम्स द सेंट्रल एशियन रीजन ओके सो बिकॉज वी आर नॉट हैविंग गुड रिलेशन विद पाकिस्तान दैट इज वाई पाकिस्तान डजेंट अलाउ अस डायरेक्ट एक्सेस टू ईदर सेंट्रल एशिया और अफगानिस्तान दिस इज वन पॉइंट एंड सेकेंड पॉइंट इज दैट द अल्टरनेटिव कैन बी द यू कैन से चाइना वी वी कैन अप्रोच दिस रीजन थ्रू चाइना ऑल्सो बट इट इज नॉट फिजिबल बिकॉज ऑफ द टू पॉइंट्स वन इज द कॉस्ट इन्वॉल्व देयर एंड द टाइम इट टेक्स बिकॉज इफ वी वॉन्ट टू यू कैन से अप्रोच द सेंट्रल एशियन रीजन वाया चाइना then one point is that uh, more cost will be involved and uh, it would it would be more time consuming also and the second point is which is more important that is the growing tensions between india and china nowadays okay so you might be knowing about that and uh, so to improve the connectivity with this region india kya kar raha hai because wo india ke liye स्ट्रेटेजिकली इम्पॉर्टेंट है इकोनॉमिकली इम्पॉर्टेंट भी है कि सेंट्रल एशिया के साथ हम अपनी कोनेक्टिविटी को इम्प्रूव करें राइट सो वन इज द चाबहार पोर्ट प्रोजेक्ट विच इज द आउटकम ऑफ ए ट्राइलेटरल एग्रीमेंट बिटवीन इंडिया ईरान एंड अफगानिस्तान राइट सो इंडिया की जो कांडला पोर्ट से हम मूव करेंगे एंड देन वाया द अरेबियन सी we will reach that uh, uh, you can say chabahar port in that iran and from there uh, via rail uh, network we will enter into the afghanistan and from afghanistan further or from iran further we can enter into the central asian countries so one is that and second is india is interested in the development of international north south transport corridor Okay, so this red line represents the international north south corridor this corridor is from bombay to bandar abbas uh, port uh, in iran and from iran further to azerbaijan then further into russia we will enter so this is the international north south transport corridor okay so if we uh, you can say try to Uh, reach the europe or try to reach this 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 entire region from india via the international north south transport corridor wo hamare liye short bhi hai economical bhi hai safer bhi hai kyun jaise maine aapko pehle bataya hai ki jo ab jo abhi hamara standard route hai idhar jaane ke liye so that is uh, this via arabian sea then gulf of yemen then strait of babel mandeb 
then Red Sea, then Suez Canal, then Mediterranean Sea, and uh, then from here we enter into the uh, that Atlantic Ocean, and from there we, uh, you can say, connect with the Europe this way. Okay, so uh, we have uh, seen that number one, this route is longer in comparison with the international north-south transport corridor, and second, this route is. Uh, riskier also because of the piracy problem in this region. So, this is an important point in this respect. And the next reality is uh, uh, India, uh, uh, one, uh, India is trying to improve its connectivity, jaysay abhi humne baat ki hai, ek Chabahar, second international north-south transport corridor and India has joined, right, Ashgabat agreement also. This is an agreement involving Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Iran, India, Pakistan and Oman. This will be a multi-model uh, connectivity project. Okay? So, you see that uh, uh, this is the uh, rail corridor okay? and this is the uh, north-south transport corridor, this yellow line. Okay? And uh, you are seeing that uh, this Tehran or Iran, we can say that is becoming the hub in this, okay. And uh, this entire region, which is this, uh, you can say this entire region and India, and uh, this is what? This is the part of the Ashgabat agreement, okay. So, this is there, and uh, the next is that uh, India's connect East, uh, so, sorry, India's connect Asia policy of 2012 is, is very much important uh, with respect which is broad based from the framework involving political, economic, security and cultural connections. So, India's Connect Asia policy is important uh, which is aim, uh, which aims at uh, increasing the political, economic, security and cultural connections with the Asian countries including the Central Asia as well. So, India has an International Technical and uh, Economic Cooperation ITEC program that attracts young professionals from this region for capacity building. So, India ne ek uh, International Technical Economic Cooperation e ek initiative start kiya hai aur uh, jis initiative ke under Central Asian country mein se jo young professional hain wahan se bhi aate hain for capacity building. So, and uh, the next is uh, for India, there is a considerable scope of participation in building infrastructure projects. Bharat ke liye ek acha scope hai investment ka. How? Because uh, uh, in Central Asian countries, India can participate in the various infrastructure projects uh, such as uh, rail uh, uh, networks, uh, road construction, highways construction construction of power transmission lines, nuclear power plants construction because India has experience in all these uh, sectors. Okay? And moreover, in addition to this, there is a rich potential for, uh, potential for India's better engagement in the, the oil and gas sector with the Central Asia, information technology, pharmaceutical, textiles, higher education. Uh, space, small and medium enterprises, food processing, etc. So, this is what is the economic scope for India in this region and uh, even at the third India-Central Asia dialogue which was held somewhere in December 2021, okay, India asked focus on 4C, 4C that is commerce, capacity development, connectivity and uh, contracts. So, this is what is India's focus as far as the Central Asia is concerned. And uh, similarly, as competition with China intensifies for resources, we know that uh, China is a major supplier in the world as far as the supply of critical minerals is concerned. Okay, So, because uh, now the relations between the China and US are uh, in trouble, these are not uh, good relations there and moreover in the wake of the Russia and Ukraine conflict, uh, China 
is towards Russia, it is supporting Russia either directly or, or indirectly. And uh, in this wake, uh, the various Western countries, India and uh, uh, Japan, South Korea, Australia, etc., and the US also, they want to increase their dependability on China as far as the supply of the critical minerals is concerned. So in that wake, uh, this region which is the Central Asian region assumes greater significance because uh, Central Asian region is also having a good source of the critical minerals, right? If we talk about the Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan is having 38.6% uh, of the total global reserves of manganese and similarly Kazakhstan is having 30.7% of the 07% of the total global reserves of, of chromium and 20% uh, of the world's lead reserves are in uh, this Kazakhstan, 12.6% of the world's zinc reserves are in Kazakhstan, 8.7% of world's titanium reserves are in Kazakhstan. So in this week we can say that uh, this region is, uh, is assuming greater significance and India has already announced a $1 billion line of credit aiming at high impact development projects for the socio-economic development of the region. So Central Asian region ki socio-economic development ke liye kuch high impact development projects ko start karne ke liye Bharat ne already in Central Asian countries ko $1 billion ki line of credit already announced kar di hai. And moreover, India Central Asia Business Council is there, which was established in 2020. And this council, right, urged to uh, has been urged to encourage these activities. So India Central Asia Business Council, jo ki 2020 mein established ki gayi thi, Bharat ne is council ko bhi, right, urge kiya hai, ke aisi activities jo uh, India and Central Asia ki connectivity ko improve kare jo India and Central Asia ki jo uh, socio, uh, jo Central Asia ki socio-economic development ke liye jo activities important hai, so un activities ko encourage kiya jaye, un activities ko badhava diya jaye, okay. And uh, through the Central Asian countries, Sorry, though the Central Asian countries are active partners in China's RBI project, we know and uh, uh, there is the disappointment among the Central Asian countries in this respect also, right? So, China ka hum Belt and Road Initiatives uske baare mein hum achche se jante hain because uh, this CPAC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is also a part of that project uh, and through that project, uh, China is increasing its influence in different countries of the world, okay? And uh, via Central Asia that uh, uh, you can say connection passes and uh, up to the Europe further, okay? So now in the wake of that, uh, you can say Belt and Road Initiative of China, uh, though it is there, but there are some factors which are uh, leading to the disappointment uh, in the Central Asian regions as far as the China is concerned. So what is the reason behind that? Uh, because of the China's One Belt, One Road initiative, China's footprints in this region are increasing in terms of the economic and political sphere. Okay, so that means uh, uh, China ke Belt and uh, Road initiative ke baad, China ka jo influence hai, interference hai, uh, in countries ke economic and political systems mein increase ho raha hai, this ko lekar ke wahaan ke logo mein disappointment hai and moreover China's policy of repression of the Muslim minority people like the Kazakh Muslims, Kyrgyz Muslims and uh, that is the you can say this Uyghur Muslim, uh, Muslims in the uh, Xinjiang region of China. Okay, so this has resulted in many anti-China protests in Central Asian countries. So, is wajah se Central Asian countries mein bahut sare anti-China protests bhi dekhne ko mile hain. Okay, so the next is uh, 
India and the Central Asian countries have a similar approach to Afghanistan as all agree on. So this is also very much important that uh, Bharat or Central Asian countries ki Afghanistan ko le kar ke ek similar approach hai. Ye bhi dono countries ke good relation, uh, dono, it means India and Central Asian countries ke good relation ke liye in future ek kafi achhi baat hai ke in ki approach hai jo ek country ko le kar ke which is in trouble now and uh, which is cause of concern for the Central Asia also, for India also. So, usko le kar ke in ki approach mein similarity hai, right? Because all these countries uh, agree on the need for an inclusive government there, okay? And uh, all these countries agree on unhindered humanitarian aid to Afghanistan, to Afghani people. And uh, all these countries agree on preservation of rights of uh, women, children, and minorities in Afghanistan. So, is sub, in sub points ko le kar ke, though inclusive government ka point ho, unhindered humanitarian aid ho, women rights ki baat ho, children rights ki baat ho, minorities rights ki baat ho. So, in sub cheezon ko le kar ke, India and Central Asian countries ki approach same hai. The, and uh, ek aur bahut important point hai, in 2022, mein, uh, Pakistan has an uh, organization of uh, Islamic countries ki jo foreign ministers ki meet ko host kiya tha. and in uh, parallel usi time, mein, Bharat in New Delhi had a uh, dialogue rakha tha Afghanistan. Ke upar. So, Central Asia ke foreign ministers ne Pakistan dwara host ki gai jo foreign ministers ki meet thi organization of Islamic countries ki usko skip kiya but they prefer to join the dialogue in New Delhi. So this is a very good point for India. It means uh, Central Asian countries are considering or giving weightage to the importance of India. Okay. And uh, even the national security advisors of uh, all the five nations attended the regional meeting on the situation in Afghanistan uh, that India hosted in November 2021. November 2021 mein Bharat ne ek uh, in uh, sabhi countries ko bulaya tha in ki national security advisors ko ki Afghanistan ke upar uh, ja Afghanistan mein jo situation emerge ho rahi hai usko le kar ke hum kuch uh, baat cheet karein so, wo sabhi countries usme bhi shamil huye, okay? And uh, one, now what are the challenges? One challenge before India is that is uh, yet to balance the geopolitical ambitions of China and Russia to evolve a mutually beneficial framework. Because uh, jaise humne pehle baat ki hai ki Central Asian region is strate strategically important. Central Asian region has economic importance as well. So, is me China ke bhi apne stake hai, Russia ke bhi apne stake hai, India ke bhi apne stake hai. So, Bharat ke samne ek challenge kya hai, ki jo geopolitical ambition China ke hai, Russia ke hai, in sab ke hote huye, Bharat ne balance kaise karna hai, because Bharat can also not ignore this region, which is the Central Asian region. Okay, and the second thing is that, uh, China's involvement in this region is uh, very much deeper or very much higher we can say because uh, China ki jo trade hai Central Asia ke saath wo 100 billion dollar ki ho chuki hai aur Bharat ki trade abhi 2 billion dollar hi hai so agar hum is cheez ko dekhte hain to abhi tak Bharat ka China ke saath there is no comparison, no competition in this situation because India is going because Bharat is going back as far as the as far as the India's trade with the Central Asian region is concerned in comparison with China if we talk about So, next challenge is slow progress on Chabahar project as the Chabahar Zahedan railway line languished. Okay? So, this Chabahar project we initiated जैसे पहले मैंने बात की थी, it is the outcome of a trilateral agreement between India, Iran and Afghanistan. India से कांडला पोर्ट से हमने कनेक्ट करना था इसको चाबहार पोर्ट को 
वहाँ से रेलवे लाइन के थ्रू हमने अफगानिस्तान में एंटर करना था और वहाँ से फिर हम सेंट्रल एशिया में एंटर करेंगे सो दैट इज़ देयर बट अभी तक दो जो हमारा चाबहार प्रोजेक्ट है बिकॉज दैट रिक्वायर्स वेरी डीप पॉकेट्स ऑफ इंडिया यू कैन से एंड ड्यू टू सम अदर रीजन्स ऑल्सो यू कैन से द प्रोग्रेस ऑन द चाबहार प्रोजेक्ट इज़ रनिंग स्लो एंड इवन द चाबहार जाहिदीन रेलवे लाइन प्रोजेक्ट इज़ ऑल्सो लैंग्वेशिंग एंड फर्दर द वाइबिलिटी ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट हैज़ ऑल्सो कम इन क्वेश्चन बिकॉज ऑफ द तालिबान टेक ओवर इन अफगानिस्तान सो दीज आर द वेरियस चैलेंजेस सो बट फिर भी बिकॉज इंडिया इज़ ट्राइंग इट्स लेवल बेस्ट एंड ऑल द सेंट्रल एशियन कंट्रीज हैव ए सॉफ्ट कॉर्नर फॉर इंडिया दे ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू इनक्रीज देयर एसोसिएशन विद इंडिया एंड द इंटरनेशनल नॉर्थ साउथ कॉरिडोर इज ऑल्सो देयर अशगाबाद एग्रीमेंट इज देयर सो तापी पाइप लाइन इज देयर एंड देर आर द यू कैन से हिस्टोरिकल एंड कल्चरल टाइज बिटवीन इंडिया एंड द सेंट्रल एशियन रीजन्स सो इन द वेक ऑफ ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी कैन से दैट द फ्यूचर ऑफ इंडियाज रिलेशन विद द सेंट्रल एशियन कंट्रीज सीम्स ब्राइट सीम्स गुड सीम्स बेटर ओके सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट दिस थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड ऑल द बेस्ट ओके आई विल मीट यू द इन द नेक्स्ट वीक विद ए न्यू टॉपिक सो बाय